Hello friends, I hope you are well. I'm about to make my afternoon iced coffee per usual and today I wanna make it together and then cozy up on the couch and have a bit of a catch up Q&A where we can connect, talk about life, talk about our dreams, etc. I asked some questions over on Instagram yesterday so I have a few talking points, a few thought starters but I'm really excited just to sit down and chat and catch up because it's been a minute but let's make some coffee first and foremost i'm thinking a vanilla honey ice latte today sounds so refreshing so let's do that and then cozy up Okay, let's get into it. I did forget to add vanilla to my latte, so it is just a honey latte, but still delicious. Got my macadamia milk. Love it. Cheers. All right, so we have quite a bit of questions and topics, but by far the most common question is some form of question about babies and if we're trying to conceive and what our dreams are with family planning and all of that. So I'm not even going to be a tease and make you wait. I'm just going to dive right into that because if you've been around my channel for a while, I feel like I've been a pretty open book about this. It's something I genuinely enjoy talking about and I know it can be a sensitive and sore subject for some because it can involve a lot of pain and waiting and patience. So if it's sensitive, maybe just skip a couple minutes because I'll be talking about it for a little bit. But I am so just enamored by motherhood. I am so inspired by mothers and I have quite a bit of friends who have become mothers over the past few years and it is just so beautiful to see them care for these sweet children and just being around their babies and children is just the most heartwarming thing and really gives you such a perspective about life that I absolutely adore. So I love motherhood and I have just also really been passionate about learning about conception and about growing a baby and I feel like my knowledge of the female body and of labor and delivery is so minuscule, but as time goes on and I listen to different podcasts and read different books, it has just been incredibly fascinating. And I joke with my friends that in another life or maybe down the, down the road in the future, I absolutely wanna be a midwife or a doula or work in that space because I feel like it is just such a passion for me. So with all that being said, I, I do feel like an open book when it comes to this subject. And currently we have not been trying to conceive at this time we do still have hopes to begin that journey later this year so it's on the horizon but we're not quite there yet but like I mentioned I shared this one book called it starts with the egg and it's very scientific and it shares a lot of the research and science behind egg development and egg quality, also sperm quality a little bit as well. So that has been fascinating. And at this point, I'm just trying to prepare my body. So I've been more mindful of what I'm putting in my body and what I put on my body and chemicals and all of that. So one little example is coffee. You know, I adore coffee. It is such a big part of my ritual and it definitely sparks a lot of joy for me. I love to create the recipes. But one kind of small change is I've been having more decaf coffee just to lower my caffeine intake because caffeine, it's okay, but for when you are pregnant, it's not recommended to have too much caffeine. So I'm starting to kind of wean off the caffeine a bit, and that's just been one example of a change to prepare my body. And no matter what, even though I am someone who loves to be prepared and I love to have all my ducks in a row, I love to have it all mapped out, I am working on just the mental and emotional transition of not having it all worked out and not knowing it all and not, 
even though I want to be prepared, I will never be fully prepared for that chapter. And I'm sure all mothers and fathers could agree with that. No matter what you do, you will never, nothing could ever prepare you for parenthood. But again, it's just something I'm really passionate about and something that I want to continue to learn about. And I can absolutely make a whole video down the road about ways that I'm preparing my body for that stage and preparing my mind because I also, something that was really on my heart to try to grow in my character development before becoming a mom was being less anxious and worried because even when we first got Palmer and he was a puppy, I would just think of like the worst case scenario, worst case scenario of, oh my goodness, in the middle of the night, what if he this, what if he that, or while we're gone, what if he this, what if he that. So I have just been kind of training my thought patterns and mind to not think like that anymore, to just have peace and trust that it's going to be okay because I really don't want to be an anxious mother all the time. And I know I'll have moments where you just, it's natural for you to worry about your children, but I definitely wanted to grow in my faith and my comfort and just having more peace. So I'm thankful to be working on that and still hope to continue to mature in that aspect. So spark notes, we haven't started trying yet, but we absolutely hope to soon and would so appreciate any sort of encouragement or prayers or anything, any advice. We would love to hear it and soak it all up. Where do you get energy from when things are not going well or as you planned? This is a good one. I like it because it's a little different, a little deeper. So I feel like, well, one, I definitely have moments where I'm just not in the mood to do certain things and I feel very low energy, fatigued, lazy, and I feel like that's just a natural part of the human experience. I feel we all go through that, but I do think of this one concept that I really try to remind myself of. So imagine this, imagine you just receive a really exciting email or text message or notification about something good that happen to you or a new opportunity and that just like gives you a pep in your step or some sort of energy so when I'm kind of feeling in a rut or feeling a little unmotivated I just remind myself okay that energy is within me I have that energy so I'm just gonna turn it on and we are going to get this done because we don't have to live our life waiting for something good to happen we have to just channel it ourselves sometimes and the older I get and the more, the older you get, the more wiser hopefully you become. And I'm so grateful for the past few years because I feel like I've been able to mature quite immensely and that's been incredible. And something I've realized is that as you get older, it is so easy for you to fall into these spirals and thought patterns of just feeling really unmotivated and really negative. So I really try to be so mindful about shutting down those thoughts immediately because what you fill your mind with really does become your life so that's just been something and then just a more silly tangible way that i feel like i get some energy is through these little rewards throughout the day so like our afternoon iced coffee as a simple example that is something i look forward to and as i'm sipping on it getting work done that is just one cute way to make my days a bit more romantic so hopefully that helps Okay, this is another good one. How do you intentionally slow down when your career revolves around media? So this is probably one of the biggest character development <laughs> things that have happened to me the past few years because in my early career and even in college, I was go, 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 hustle, 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 busy, 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 the busiest bee of them all. I just wanted to always be doing something. And that really wore me down. And I read this book that I've recommended countless times, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. This definitely added so much perspective and truly was life-changing for both Brandon and I. And we started implementing our rest day every Saturday. And this is something I've discussed a bit before, but essentially on Saturdays, we don't check emails. We don't go on social media. We don't do household chores we simply rest and enjoy. So we do activities with friends and family, we enjoy nature, we read, we watch a movie, we simply indulge in just the goodness. And it's so freeing to, cause it's one thing to have plans to relax and watch a movie, but if you also like don't set boundaries for yourself, like, oh, checking emails, checking social medias, 
you better believe I would be watching the movie, but also scrolling through social media. So it's just so nice to have those sort of rules on our day just to create that really intentional, restful experience. So that has been so incredible. And I feel like a lot of the people that surround me, they don't really care much about social media or media. And um, they really just keep me grounded. And we talk about a lot more things than just Instagram and whatnot in pop culture. So that has been refreshing as well. Okay, this is a fun, simple one. What other fruits slash veggies are you wanting to plant? I bought the gardening book. I bought the gardening book too. Yay, so happy about the gardening book. I'll insert the gardening book she's talking about because um, that's the one that really helped me with our raised bed garden. So the garden's doing pretty good. I mean, there's some things that are not having much progress, but one thing that I would love to grow next year would be strawberries. I'd love to grow some strawberries, but you have to do that more in the winter. So I was a little late in the year for that. And then we have our lemon tree, which I'm so excited about. I'd love to plant some other kind of tree, maybe an avocado or mango or lime tree. So we're still brainstorming, but it's so funny. I feel like a few people said this would happen, but the more things I plant, the more I want to plant. I just want to keep growing and growing and creating an oasis. So it's definitely becoming more and more of a passion, which I'm so glad about because sometimes you like the idea of something, but then you don't actually like doing it. But thankfully, I love the idea of gardening and I really love gardening itself. So that has been a really fulfilling experience. And even if you just want to grab a basil plant the next time you're at the grocery store and start with that, I feel like it's a very rewarding hobby. There were quite a bit of questions about moving and if this is our forever home. So I'll talk about my thoughts with that, but I can't stress enough, I'm sure it's obvious, but I am so incredibly grateful for this home and the experiences and memories we've already got to enjoy here. And it really just feels like such a safe and comfort haven for us. And for that, I am just beyond grateful. And the thought of selling this home or moving, it does make me very sentimental and sad. And I mean, at this point, we have zero plans of moving or relocating anytime soon. Of course, you never know what could happen. You never know what's down the road, but we genuinely love this place and it's such a beautiful community to raise family. And we have our family super, super close by, which is especially um, hopeful for when we have kids, just being able to have family nearby to help us raise our kids, is something that is important to us. So with that in mind, we really do think we'll stay here for quite some time. If anything, like it does not feel small to us at this point, but as our family grows, it may start to feel a bit small, especially since we both work from home. So of course my opinion may change, but at this point, we have no desire to sell or move. We are so, so grateful for this home and want to keep making it cozier and cozier throughout the years and are really excited for what's to come with this place. I will say I do have a more far off dream of purchasing a beach home somewhere because I absolutely love the ocean and I feel like a little beach bungalow would be so fun for us to have and live at some of the parts some of parts of the year but then also have for family and friends to enjoy so we'll see that's kind of like more far off but definitely something that i love the charming notion of having a beach house so we'll see but again so incredibly thankful for this place and everything it's been to us already okay travel 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 oh my goodness this is one of my favorite topics as you probably may know or assume so do we have any international travel plans for this year? And yes, we do. Actually next month, so in just a few weeks, we have plans to go somewhere very, very, very far away, which I'm so excited about, but I do feel a little butterflies because it has been years since we traveled out of the country. So it, even though we have been fortunate enough to travel out of the country, it does seem a bit new and unknown and this is a new place that we've never been to before and i'm so excited i don't want to say the location yet because we're still finalizing some of the booking elements so i would love for you to guess though because i will say this is my number one 
dream travel destination. It's really the place that I've always envisioned of going to. I'm trying to remember if I've said before on my channel where my number one place to travel to would be, but I would love to hear your guesses. And then other travel plans for the summer. We actually have a beach trip coming up with Brandon's side of the family and we're all going to stay in a house together and his brother and sis or my brother and sister-in-law have um, three babies. Well, one's a baby and two toddlers. So that's just going to be so fun to enjoy the beach with them and get to hang out with them all week. So we have that. And then hopefully we'll see my family up in New England later in the summer. But it really just depends. <laughs> the past year or so, we've really just been booking trips pretty close to when we actually go just because of all the unknowns and the climate you really don't know and I always kind of want to pace myself and not get too excited about certain travels because we all know how fast things can change so those are the plans of as of now god willing okay next one is about budgeting and where you allocate funds for quick weekend trips so I want to talk about this because I feel like we all have different priorities of what we want to spend our money on and I feel like it's easy to compare like oh wow they get to go on trips all the time or oh wow they have such a nice car such a nice house but I think we all make sacrifices for certain things and of course some of it comes with privilege and certain high paying jobs factor into that but also like for instance Brandon and I, we love to travel, we love home decor and going out to dinner, but something that we really don't care about much at this time is cars. Like both of us drive super basic car. Brandon has had his car since high school, it's his first car, and it, they're both really super basic and that's just not something we wanna spend our money on, but instead we wanna prioritize spending it on travel and other experiences like that. So I think it's all about prioritizing what is important to you and realizing that you are going to need to make a sacrifice whether it be eating out less so you can go on a weekend trip or not spending so much money on clothes so that you can invest in a nicer car i feel like it really is a matter of sacrificing and prioritizing what really is important to you so that makes sense and of course your income factors into that as well but for us, we have a budgeting meeting every week and every month where we decide what we want to budget for that specific month. And of course, we have our groceries and things that are the same every single week. But then we have those bigger goals like paying off our mortgage and saving up for fun trips. Maybe we will do a budget video again soon with Brandon. We did one a long time ago. It's probably funny to watch it now, but maybe that would be helpful because I will say he is the budget king. And that is probably one of the things we get into little tiffs about the most because he is so regiment about the budget, like in logging every purchase. Meanwhile, I'm definitely more of a free spirit. I don't think I'm super just... I, I don't hold tightly to money personally, so <laughs> we'll get a little tips about that, but that could be fun to do a video on that soon. This is a quick question. Do you and Brandon drink alcohol? I've always wondered. So we do, but barely, <laughs> especially Brandon. He barely drinks alcohol. And honestly, I feel like subconsciously this could be because we both have, unfortunately, people who have struggled with addiction in our families. So subconsciously, that might be part of it. But honestly, I, I love my kombucha. I love fun drinks, but alcohol I'm not crazy about. We will have a drink every now and then, especially when traveling, if you know it's kind of part of the experience, but it's not something we really crave. So... Yeah, I'm not against it by any means, but it's not something I crave all the time. And I like it here and there. Like June Shine Kombucha is really yummy, the hard kombucha. And I like a margarita when I'm eating Mexican or in Mexico. So I kind of like it in the experience of like a pina colada by the beach, but it's not part of like the daily routine or a real craving for us. Do you ever feel lost in your faith? I'm dealing with this now and I don't know what to do. This is good. This is going to be a long-winded answer, I'm sure, but I would love to talk about faith and spirituality because, of course, that is a huge part of my life, and I feel it is a huge part of a lot of people's lives, so I'd love to talk about it more. So to your question, do you ever feel lost? I mean, 
absolutely like as far as questioning the meaning of life what are we doing here the technicalities of how this all came to be yes i have definitely had many moments of questioning but at the end of the day i really do believe like our minds are not mature or evolved enough to understand fully but I have always had this true belief and sense of God from a very, very young age. Even when I didn't grow up going to church every weekend, it wasn't really a strong pillar of my home life growing up. But I always just felt very drawn to spirituality and God. And it's always been something that's brought me a lot of comfort having a faith and it's brought me so much peace. I believe in Jesus and I believe in the gospel and the Bible and to me, if you know about Jesus, I mean, he is the most gentle and lowly person to ever walk the earth. And I feel like everything he's mapped out for us is so beautiful. And just the key wisdom on how to live your life that's in the Bible, I feel like that is so helpful to make me understand how to go about my day to day. But with that being said, I feel like, well, I know there is so much pain and hurt that is involved with the church and with religion. And I know a lot of people have been hurt by religion and I myself have, I haven't had anything major, but I mean, I've had people condemn me and say like, oh, I, I can't be a Christian because of this, because of that. And to me, that is so sad. And it is the absolute opposite of what Jesus wants because he, if you look at his life, he went to the most broken people and loved on them. And he reaches people through his love and not by being so legalistic and self-righteous. So for me, that has been a big frustration with religion and something that I've had to deal with. And just come to terms with where I stand with and it is personal for everyone and I believe that we each have our own spiritual gifts and ways that we will experience him so that has just been something that I believe to be true and I am still so young and have so much to learn but for me I'm so thankful that like it has always click clicked for me and I mean even I keep harping on nature but this has been a real big theme for me and Spending time in nature has been so incredibly uplifting for my life. Just daily, even if you only can do five minutes a day outside, like as much as you can get, I feel like that really teaches you so much about life and God gives us nature to remind you of the beauty of the world and of his creation. So to me, that has just been a game changer. And I want to read this quote because it is so beyond beautiful. I posted it on Instagram the other day. I found it on Pinterest. I'm not sure who the author is but I'll read it for you. This morning on the yellow couch we sat, just God and me. I told him, thanks for coffee beans and showed him my favorite tree. I love the way the branches split, the colors look so good. He chuckled softly, looked at me and said, I knew you would. And when I asked him why sometimes my prayers were ignored, he said, I've heard them all my dear, but you were made for more. Your blueprint is spectacular, just trust me. And you will see if you start to doubt my work, turn to your favorite tree. I just love that. So that's more on patience and trusting in God. But I mean, if you are struggling with your faith or where you stand, I really encourage you to maybe listen to some worship music. But I will say that for me is something that really speaks to me, but it might not speak to you. Again, we all can experience spirituality and God very differently. But for me, music is so, so beautiful. So I can link a few worship playlists and I think going to church is important, even though religion can be difficult. Maybe if church is hard for you, it's because you haven't found the church that you're meant to go to. So I'm so thankful. We love our church home. And it's been so beautiful to be surrounded by people who are genuinely living for God and to glorify Him and are gentle and loving to everybody and don't discriminate. So I feel like that's been important and no church you go to is ever going to be perfect. Every Everything on this planet has its flaws. Nothing is perfect. So that's just something that we have to <laughs> grasp. But yeah, that's been important to find a church community and being around that and having those reminders every Sunday. And something that's the most beautiful to me that makes me emotional every time I experience it is every Sunday worshiping and 
being surrounded by people from all walks of life, just worshiping God together, that is the most touching experience for me. And it might not be for you, but again, it's all different for everybody, but that's my experience. And I feel like, again, spending time in nature, reading books. C.S. Lewis is a great author when it comes to Christianity specifically. And then also John Mark Comer, I've mentioned him in the past. So there's a lot of great books and resources out there and I'll link a few of my favorites, but that's a bit of my journey. And of course it's ever evolving, but I'm so, so thankful to know God and know Jesus and have that as a firm foundation and pillar of my life because it really has created this unshakable joy for me that is hard to express in words, but hopefully some of you will be able to understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, going back to the kids, someone asked if, will your channel become a mommy blog as opposed to the lifestyle channel once you have kids? So it's hard for me to say anything about that right now since I am quite naive because I am not a mom yet and I don't know what that chapter will really entail. But at this point, I do not plan to become a mommy vlogger. I would love to keep things relatively the same and do my same types of videos. Of course, there will be pieces of motherhood sprinkled in there, but I don't intend on showing my kids on social media quite often. I probably will here and there, but not as like the main focus. So I would love to keep like a lifestyle channel and then share my experience through motherhood, but not having it be like the main topic, if that makes sense. Okay, this is a funny question that I got a few times. It's so random, but I love that you guys are wondering about it. So the question is, where is the iconic Bickerstaff's neon sign? I'll put a picture if you don't know, but this neon sign was at our wedding and then we had it over our bed at our first apartment. And right now it's currently in our garage. We still have it, but it's in our garage. I told Brandon we should just hang it up in the garage and plug it in because that'd be kind of cool. But right now I really don't have a place for it. I, I thought about putting it in my office before we moved in, but the design vision sort of changed a bit. So I don't know where to put it now. I don't, I can't think of any place to put it. I, I don't know. I honestly kind of forgot about it, but you guys did it. That's so funny. I like this one. It says, how do you deal with negative friends slash people in your life? This is good and can definitely be quite layered. And I have had my struggles with friendship in the past too, because I feel like I'm such a people pleaser, but I, I just don't want any sort of negative energy at all. I really don't. And I believe wholeheartedly that who you surround yourself with becomes who you are. So it is so important to surround yourself with kind, open-hearted, open-minded people. I feel like that is so crucial. And one of my struggles the past few years has been that I have a pretty diverse group of people around me, which I love, but also it can be confusing because people have strong convic convictions and some of my friends believe one thing and some of my friends believe the other thing. And for me, it can be confusing because sometimes I don't know where I stand or I'm still trying to figure it out. So that's kind of straying away from, cause they're not being negative. They're just being passionate about what they believe in, which is beautiful, but it can cause negative feelings for me because I feel like I can't fully relate to anybody. So that's sort of just my struggles recently, but for as far as negative people, I feel like one, you want to be a good influence on them and try to when they start to be negative, try to be positive and spin it the other way. But also, I mean, if you need to create boundaries, I'm absolutely here for that. And I think those can be so important to, you know, prioritize what you need and the people that you need to surround yourself in order to grow and mature. So it can be hard, but I really do believe setting boundaries with certain relationships is crucial. I feel like I've answered this before, but I'll just do a quick rapid fire answer. How did you know you were ready to be engaged slash married? Okay, so rundown of my little love story. So Brandon and I started dating over 10 years ago. I was 15, he was 17. And at first it just started out as like a fun high school romance, you know, so fun, go to prom together, so cute. He has a car, oh my goodness. But I mean, we just fell in love. We, oh, hi. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just got a package. Anyways, we just fell in love and couldn't get enough of each other. And thankfully, throughout the years, we've grown together and our paths and stars have aligned and we've been able to just really create this life together. And it's been easy. It hasn't been hard. It hasn't been tumultuous and it hasn't been a struggle. It just has felt very like God ordained and I say this time and time again, but the timing of when Brandon came into my life was so serendipitous. I mean, I say he was my angel and is my angel because it was a really difficult time for me growing up. And he just was such a rock for me and really led me to a beautiful path. And I'm just so grateful for the life that we've been able to create together. So I feel like you will know if it's the right person, if you just feel this overwhelming sense of peace and that goes, that's the same kind of notion for if you're thinking about getting married, if you're not sure, I would definitely recommend you to give yourself more time and do premarital counseling and really try to get to the core because I feel like when you're about to marry someone or just have a partner, you should have a sense of peace and safety that you've never felt with anyone before. So I think that is so important and I'm just so thankful for the man he is. And of course we, we have our arguments and we have our differences, but we have this overwhelming respect and love for each other, which I know is so precious and I'm so thankful for. So without me starting to cry, that is just like the gist of it, I feel like. And a big part of it too is becoming a person who is healthy enough to be in a long-term relationship because a lot of times relationships can be difficult for us because of our past and because of the hurt that we've experienced we can't always be the best partner so kind of diving into that and trying to heal that before you get into a long-term relationship is super important okay a little fun one do you ever think you'll get another pet so who knows i ha i i mean i would if it were just me, I would probably have like five dogs by now and a couple cats and two bunnies and a chicken. And I love animals so, so much, but they also do come with so much responsibility and so much time. And also as someone who loves to travel, having a lot of animals would complicate our travel plans. So I do have to be mindful of that. And Brandon is very content with Palmer. I mean, he adores Palmer and they're best of friends, but he doesn't have any desire to add on to the free friend family anytime soon. So I think we'll be set with Palmer for many, many years. And then maybe as our future kids get older and want certain pets to take care of, we'll add on to that. But who knows? And maybe we'll start fostering like different animals. I would love to do that also. But again, it'll depend kind of on certain things. We'll see. But Yes, big animal fan over here. And Palmer's doing really well. He's growing up. He's maturing, but still so so energetic and so playful and we're just so thankful to have him as part of our family okay last question i feel like this is a good place to land a good place to end how do you protect your peace throughout burnout culture and everything going on in society this is something it's like a full-time job to protect your peace these days right to just be able to maintain a sense of calmness and keep yourself collective when there's so much chaos going on. I know it is so hard and I definitely struggle with it as well. And I feel like we all need to give ourselves grace. We're gonna feel fatigued by it all. We're gonna have days where we just feel so unmotivated because we're so weighed down by the culture and everything going on. So we gotta give ourselves grace and time to rest and digest everything going on. But the biggest thing is being mindful of what you consume and how much news and how much social media you're consuming and what kind, what shows you're watching. I feel like that has just made the biggest impact on my life and the weeks where I fill my mind with encouraging books, encouraging shows, encouraging music, I feel so much more free and light. But then those weeks where I'm just obsessed with checking the news, obsessed with watching this pop culture show that isn't really doing much for my character development, stuff like that. It's just, it doesn't make me feel good. It really doesn't. And that's the bottom line. So really filling your mind with wholesome and lovely things is probably my biggest tip, but also spending time in nature and spending time with people you love and are inspired by are just those crucial things. And 
I love to add little elements of joy throughout my day, like walks, vitamin D walks, iced coffee, creating fresh food, baking, all of that, just finding those things that really make you feel alive and filling your days with as much of that as you can really makes such a huge difference. But it's not always the easiest to stay peaceful and keep a sound mind, but we have to keep encouraging and reminding each other of all the goodness that surrounds us. So cheers to that. We'll keep <laughs> cheering each other on, but thank you so much for sitting down, having a coffee with me. Again, I'm so, so grateful for all of you and your encouragement. Let me know if you'd like to talk about anything we discussed a bit more in the comments. I'll definitely take more time to respond to comments on this specific video. But again, super, super grateful for you all and love you so much and cannot wait to see you next. Bye.